tell us what the motor is, mate. I think they came out in the, in the early 80s and they're um, a Suzuki Curvo or an SC100. Like a little hatchback? Yeah, like a little hatchback thing. The, the rear, the back of it, the, the glass opens up so you can get into the boot. Yeah, right. Um, the motor's in the back. Um, oh, yeah. I think the radiator's in the front. It's very similar to the, um, the two-stroke Suzuki that I've got. Oh, except, yeah, right, eh? Except the, um, the Curvo, they took the same body, they cut it down the middle, added 100 mil to it, yeah. and put a later model engine in it. So this is obviously a four-cylinder. Four yeah, this is a four-cylinder. Um, and I think it's about 800 cc, maybe, yeah, it looks about 800, maybe yeah, 1,000 or something big, eh? rather like that. Where's it going to? It's going down to Invercargill. There's a guy down there that badly wants it, and it's been sitting in the garage up in the shed there collecting dust for about 20 years. So. Yeah. This morning, Carl's been here, and he's put metal right through here. And uh, this is my driveway, going around the outside of the, the balcony because we we're too close to it. So it comes up right up here. And he's just leaving. Oh, this is great. Quite a lot of metal. Bit of spare stuff over there we can spread out later on. We get the cladding out of the way for the building. Dogs have already been walked this morning once. Oh, this is good having a decent bloody driveway here. I think it's uh, number 20, call it. They call it P20. That's another job done and dusted. Bruno's looking pretty good this morning. Hey, eh? A bit straight. A bit all straight. Bloody good digger driver, Cal. You can hear pace squeaking. These guys have already had their walk this morning. Stay. It's okay, pace. Stay there. Stay. Where you go? Get out, mate. Get out. Calm down, Bruno. Calm down, Bruno. Calm down. Where you go? Wake up, Bruno. Hook him. Post getting fat. Since she got spade, she's getting fat. So spread a bit of topsoil down here. This just be a bit of a hole here. Oh, it's a bit of a hole at the end still. Probably grow something on that. It's actually good, good topsoil that. Here, Pace! <whistles> Little bugger. Right, well, he's back on the lead because he wasn't listening. That's what we do. He's got his ears back because he knows he's done wrong. I haven't told him off, just like called him. When he gets called, he comes in, so you never tell a dog off for coming back when you call him. Otherwise, it just teaches him not to come, but he's on the lead. And he knows that's the end of his freedom right now. This bloke here actually used to live in the house. There's the old kitchen. Soon we're going to smash that over. There's going to be a big window. One of those windows there is going to be right there. That's going to be the door. And that whole face is going to be cedar. And as you can see, all the trees are gone. I've got a completely new outlet. Outlet? Out view. Outlook. 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 Yeah. Welcome to the houseboat, folks. And that's my son there. It's old Ruster, Ball Buster. And today... Oh, I'm salivating thinking about it, making something fire Today we're cooking up some uh, fish. I'm going to do some sashimi and also some of the pan. And I'm using this here, suet, which is actually beef lard. If it was a pig, it would be called leaf lard. If it's cattle, it's called suet. And suet is the fat around the internal organs, like the, the kidneys. Yeah, it's the kidney fat around there and also the, the gut area. It makes a really nice fat for cooking with. And the broccoli is done. I don't like how I'm doing my broccoli. I'm going to give it like a very short boil. It's in the pot. So there's our greens sorted. This lemon and dill came from Mike from Weka Digital Media. And down here I've got some, for sashimi, some trevally, which I've cut up. I'm going to add that to the uh, stuff that's going in the pan. And I've got my dill and lemon there. Just like putting that on it. I'm going to put that in the pan. Now that's going to be for, for Yona. Because he's not a big sashimi uh, fan. There's the desired sound. Beef fat's really good for doing fish. It's my dad's favourite, it's my favourite too. Look what he's done. No tomato on there. That smells great. If you guys could smell this fish, holy shit, that smells great. So, fish is done. Just resting it. And cutting up this lovely bit of trevally for sashimi for me. You're just cutting the pith out of the lemon. Just remember, son, that tomatoes have this insane way of keeping the heat in for hours. They're like radioactive. For hours. Hours, mate. 
So on the menu today, for my son, we've got broccoli, fried tomatoes, trevally, and blue cob with a bit of lemon for over your fish. And over here for me, broccoli, some lemon, fried tomatoes, some ginger, and some nice trevally sashimi. That's good. Have you tried the fish? Ooh, it looks good. Blue cod's one of your favourite, isn't it? How's the trevally taste compared to it? Um... Go try some more blue cod. Chewier. Yeah, a bit chewier. Yeah, blue cod's quite soft in texture, eh? Mm. Mm. Yeah, the texture's different. Taste is much different, though. Just the, just the texture, yeah? That's a different taste, but I wouldn't say it's stronger. Yeah. Oh, I'm so hungry. This is a great way to break your fast. Bit of soy. I've only once ever had this before. Trevally. A nice sashimi fish. I would say I enjoy kahawai better. And I certainly enjoy having bluefin tuna better. The bit of ginger. Mm. Refresh the mouth. And then smash another bit of fish on your chopsticks and straight into it. Mmm. That's good. Currently Al is in the chicken coop. Scratching around like a young chicken. <laughs> Hillary's standing around just monitoring everybody. Bruno's got a pig skin he's been chewing on. And Rustaball Buster's just put on a new hat. <laughs> Rust the ball, Buster! We've got a bit of a fire going here. How'd you get that out? Did you just dig it out? Oh, I just got to sort of push it out, get a bit of an angle going. That could be used for something, eh? Could be. This ground's all dark, eh? Yeah, it's good. Just all that bloody twitch. Look at that twitch. Yeah, that's Holy all around shit. the post, so all that came oh, out. Oh, mate, look at that. What can you do with that? Nothing. It's just a bloody pain in the ass. Compost. <laughs> you reckon it would compost there, or it can just grow through the compost, wouldn't it? And just oh, yeah. kick away. Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah. So this is a bit of meat that David Vass shot. It's actually a, an old stag, so it's not going to be a real, um, let's say, tender. I'm going to smash heaps of salt on this, and put some butter on the plate, and we'll hoof that right on the fire now. She's pretty hot. The desired sound. So we've got Yona down there doing the uh, turning bit. Jeez, it smells good. It hasn't taken long for our steaks to cook. They are ready. They've been on there probably for, I don't know, five minutes and they are done. Ooh, that's a nice looking feed of venison. Mmm. Looks great, doesn't it? Holy shit, that looks good. So on the embers there, in the tin for is Yona's potato, and we've got the beetroot. And I've seen Al, like she's been roasting beetroot each night by the fire, and it's absolutely delicious. Yeah, you just throw it straight into the into the ashes, don't you, mate? Like yep. into the embers. It cooks up beauty. Mmm, really, really good. And we had some last night. Even the young fellas enjoyed it, didn't they, mate? They did. I was surprised. Yeah. So, how many are in there? Three, is it? Three. That'll be good. That'll be good. Let's put some beetroot and onion on the plate. Yeah, it's going to do some mushrooms with butter on the fire. That'll be pretty tasty, son. Oh, man. Not bad for a bit of old stag. Actually, really bloody good. Hey, you know, your dinner's up, son. Okay, you gonna pick it up? <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Did that burn you at all? No. There's the hot coal down there again. Hold on, that one there, that's the one. And do it in slow motion so we can see again. I can't do it in slow motion. Okay, I don't in slow motion. I can do it again though. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. And did it burn at all? No. Because it's not, it doesn't, you know, it's only touching your skin for a really short amount of time. Right, okay. Because it's shaking it. Yep. Is that one of the things you learnt at, um... No, I learnt it off YouTube. 
Did you learn it off YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you learned it? It's one of those videos that says, do not try this at home. <laughs> <laughs> so you tried at your father's home instead. <laughs> well, that worked. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another exciting episode of Smoko with Arm. So there may be a few vegans and vegetarians going, oh no. No, not a dead chicken. But Arb knows what it is, don't you, Arb? That's actually tofu, that chicken, yeah. Yep. They're really making it look good nowadays. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty much 89% tofu. So I think there's 2% false bones or something there. Oh, yep, yep. yep. So it's there we... made from a textured vegetable protein. <laughs> no, no tall story, absolutely 100% no, correct. 100% true. Yep. Yep. Mmm. Yep. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Soy beans never tasted so good. Oops. You're going to have that Bruno? Oh, we enjoyed that. He's a vegetarian too. He's a vegetarian, yeah. This is all this is all tofu. Mm. Yeah. And joining us today in this exciting episode of Smoker with Arb is my son. Rasta Ball Buster! Mm. Would you like some tofu? Yes, please. I'll take the whole wing off, grab the thing in two hands, and tear it off like a caveman. It's tofu. <laughs> Just so it's not to offend anybody. Anyway, uh, there you go. Got a lot of um, very uh, interesting comments on uh, Arb's work and the plastering he's done particularly, and the ceiling. So rather than me try to um, fight my way through them all, I'll just give Arb the phone. He can read a few out and answer the uh, the um, you know, questions or he can commentate on what you've written after he's had his boiled egg because Arb needs to have his protein. If he doesn't get his protein, you don't want to be around him. Yeah, Bruno sure sniffing. What's that, bud? Shit sure hits the fan. Yep. And Bruno's sniffing around underneath, like waiting for a bit of shell or something. Not going to happen, Bruno. So that'll be quite interesting to hear what Arp's got to say. Yeah. One yeah. of the ones that um, was, I won't get you to answer it now. I'll get you to answer it later. One of the ones was, um, why didn't you just plane all of the, like the roof, you know, like all the rafters? Plane all the joists. Yeah, to yeah. A level. Yeah, and, and then put in rather than that there. But I'll let you answer that after you've had your egg. Well, I can answer that one now. I knew you would. You couldn't help it. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, for a start, they weren't. It's not a plane job because they're full of nails. So I'm not going to put my plane over any timber that's full of nails. So they weren't level either. They're out of level. So the only real option would have been to stick timber up beside each one and then put it to a string line. But using this Rondo system, it's really a lot cheaper than timber. So what happened there was I effectively made it quicker and cheaper and I set it up to my laser so it was level so it was in that case it wasn't even worth messing with it because the lines were so bad the timber was so bent there were some that were as, mm. as close or really quite bent but it had been all put in wet you know so it wasn't worth messing, messing with the old stuff in that case it was better off to go with the new stuff yeah and Arb actually did say that he explained if you watched in the earlier videos he went through it and he explained how the Rondo was cheaper and more effective to do it's almost raw egg there, does it? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you like it, eh? Mm -hmm. Just hard to get out of the shell. Are you sure it's not tofu? Uh, well, could be. Yeah. Could be. It's, it's running in there. See, you like it? Yeah. It's probably the best for you, well, too. I can have them raw. Yep. Oops, too much salt. Sam, would you like some more tofu? Or you had enough? Just please. Tear into it. Turn that wing off. Oh, I'll grab that. Yeah, no, tear into it. Oh, Bruno's down there like, uh, can I get some? Not going to happen, Bruno. Just rip a big chunk off. That's the one, Sam. Tear into it. Uh, for those of you that are wondering, did I kill one of my chickens? Hell no, my chickens are for laying eggs. When they get to the end of their life, then I kill them. Or the end of their laying life, and then I kill them and eat them. There's no point in killing a laying chicken. But also, the other thing is that for the price of this here, this is one of the few meats I buy as chicken, because I cannot, I cannot grow it. I can't do it anywhere near as close as what it costs for that there pre-cooked. So this is one that I didn't grow on the farm. I do eat a lot of chickens, and I've eaten just about most of them. I used to have like 30, now I've only got like 25 from two years ago so they go but no this is a countdown special not bad either okay this is just for those guys who were saying about staggering the vertical butt joints or something um this is the joint is actually in behind this wall this is the wing wall for the wardrobe and um plan the wardrobe obviously before jibbing and that's where i joined the joint it so it becomes an internal joint now for the guys so this wall doesn't have any joints on it at all this one had to because it's a 6.7 meter length so I've done it here because 
there's no way I'd do it here where it would crack. So I can't make it short. I wouldn't want to do it in the middle either. So I did it here on a stud. Yeah, and you have um, prepped that one anyway, haven't you? Yeah, I just cut it back a bit, yeah, keep it tight. Mm. That's it, Bruno, you've had enough chicken. So what I'm doing here is I'm putting the facings on. I'm leaving a two mil gap here because I'm gonna put a little bead of MS sealant between these two, just from the outside again to stop the rain from going in. And then it tucks in underneath there. I'm going to put it on with a wee pin, but I'm actually going to screw them on anyway with stainless screws and I'll pre-drill it through the weatherboard so because it's near the end of the weatherboard there's a risk that if I put in a proper nail to hold it on it's going to make the weatherboard split so the pins will just locate it and then that's how it will happen. Pre-primed in behind, the whole thing's been fitted, the same with the bottom one here the sill, it's all been fitted, taken out, and then pre-primed. The sill has got a big gap behind it below the window. You'll see, it's to allow all that drainage, which technically could come in. We've done this bottom flashing below the window, the sill flashing it's called, and the opening and everything has all been allowing potential water that may get behind to come out. Well, this sill has had the back relieved out of it as well. Unlike... In the old days, this would actually go through the weatherboards. So there'd also be a groove cut along the back called an anti-capillary groove, stopping the water from being blown up underneath, potentially into the opening, which is probably what happened with the old stuff, which was why it was so rotten around there. Yeah, right. But this is actually a facade now. It sits on here. There's a gap below there to allow the actual frame to drain, gap underneath here all cut out, and that's a facade. But I weatherproof this around the top and the head flashing so that theoretically any water that could ever get in there could still drain out the bottom. Well, I'm not stout for all the flashing. Oh yep. Got to fit over the top of the go around and not intrude on the flashings. Oh, well, let's see if she fits. I suppose it's a bit of uh, trial and error, isn't it? A little bit. A little bit of jiggery pokery. Not far away. I've still got to come down a bit more. Yeah, you can see that on that yeah. side there. It's not bad, though. Just a bit more. A little bit more. Maybe another couple of mil. What I've done is I've arrested the edges, taken a little mark off them because. External facings are always going to crack at a mitre. So right. all you do is you make a feature of it. You take a little 45 off with your plane and a bit of sandpaper. You screw it together and then there's a line there yep. already and it's a straight line, you know. What's that word? Is it Aris? Aris. A-R-R-I-S. Oh, okay. Aris, the edges of everything, it's all Aris. Because paint doesn't stick to a sharp edge. Right. It'll okay. just knock off. So you've got to knock the corners off it so you Aris it. Good tip. How's she looking now, bud? I I've still got to go a bit more. Oh, yep. Just a tad, just a tad, yeah. That's what I do my arrising with. It's got a really shallow angle on the blade so that you can also go across end grain. Right. Oh, yeah. So you can go along the end of plywood or something like that. It's really fine. Normal blades, blades on a plane are at about 25 degrees. Right. And this is down to about 15 or something. Okay. So it can do the end grain as yeah, well. Nice. That's what I use to knock the edge off. So if you're using a uh, brush quite a bit for priming, like I am priming behind, you don't have to wash it out or soak it in water all the time. You can just sit it in a real damp rag in a bucket or something like that, and it just stays soft the whole time. No air gets to the paint so it doesn't dry. 
so you don't have to keep on washing your primer brush because every time I cut a piece of timber I've got to prime it. Yeah, right. Because I want to fit it, you know. So good tip, bro. Yep. Absolutely. Got a few stones in here just for drainage. This is a really rich soil, but it's got a lot of twitch in it. This uh, set of white root. So I don't really want to put it into my dirt because I'm going to be planting my nettle in here. Here's a bit of uh, dirt with a nice worm in it, so we'll just gently lay you down there, mate. This is broken down horse poo. Bought that a while ago. Ten bucks a bag, just locally. And a bit of potting mix over my horse poo. Airplane in the sky, up on the skill saw, it's pretty noisy. But down here in my little bit of native bush, I can sort of get away from the world a wee bit, and this is where I planted my stinging nettle. However, Jerry, one of my subscribers, who's actually a uh, subscriber who's received the most amount of hearts from me because of his useful and great constructive criticism, uh, suggested no, don't plant them there, Clay, the root system will get away and you'll have a problem that becomes an absolute pest as they are an invasive uh, plant, or species at least. So, rather than um, just tear them out of the ground, I'm gonna tear them out of the ground and replace them, and repot them into this here. It might be a little bit small, but by the sounds of it, they'll still thrive in here. Got a little good tucker, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make two holes and put one on each side. Well, actually, there'll be like uh, three on each side, or three on one side and two on the other. How many plants have I got? I think I had five in memory. One, two, three, four, five years. So let's get digging these suckers out and replanting them. Sorry mate, you've had a bit of a bit of a tuck. I could just pull them out by hand. Oh there they go. Those guys are all three together. They're like a family anyway. So see so you got to stay with your mum and dad and you're all good. There's plenty of horse shit in there. So this here is a um, introduced species of stinging nettle. I think it comes from the UK, I'm not really sure. It's definitely not the uh, native species we have in New Zealand, which is onga onga, and much more potent as far as the sting goes. I've been stung by both, and they're not too bad. Well, it actually depends on the time of year. In the middle of summer, onga onga's deadly. My father once fell into a bush with his top off and really paid the price when he was working as a ranger in Able Tasman National Park. Let's see if these guys are joined together. No, they're not. Anyway poke you in there and this guy can just come straight out and yeah, hopefully get some root system oh, he's got a he's got a, got a real root system this guy there we go from what I've been told they'll they'll thrive in here they don't seem to um, need too much I'm gonna put some of this outside dirt on because it's nice and wet and moist and I'll water them back in again just want to thank you guys for the tips, really appreciate it. Really grateful for your input on my gardening, because as you know, I don't know stuff all about it, but I've certainly learned a lot from you guys, and the thing about uh, YouTube is I always try to add value to your lives, but it's kind of cool in a way, because you end up adding value to my life and um, teaching me stuff I didn't know. Like this, for instance, I would have just left these here, these plants, and they would have become, you know, quite, um, they would have got a wow me, and... I would have had a problem and I would have regretted it in a couple of years time so now I've got them in a contained pot so I'll better take my nettle tea and everything from what's growing in here and also keep them away from the dogs so I'm going to put that back down over them so the dogs don't go in and get stung and give them some water just leave this bucket outside with a tin on it and there's always water down here then I know these guys like to be reasonably damp and moist. You have filtered sunlight through the trees. So they're in a perfect place down here in my little uh, bit of native bush, which I'm going to show you through now. So when I bought this bit of land, it was this bit of native bush that really was the main reason I really wanted to buy it. And there's lots of really interesting plants in here. One of them is this one here, which uh, you bushmen all know straight away. This is uh, Kawa Kawa. And I always say, shaped like the heart, good for the heart. Very rich in antioxidants, makes a great tea. 
And these are um, interesting, aren't they? That must be its seed now coming up. I hadn't noticed it before really closely on them, but that one's got it. It's a great plant, the cow. The cow has got all sorts of really good uses. It's just a beautiful plant. It's great having my own one in the backyard here. This here is a massive Kanuka tree. Going right up into the sort of canopy of the bush. Makes great firewood Kanuka, as does Manuka. Although I won't be chopping this one down, it'll be down here. I'm not really sure what's going on here. There's black polythene, you know, in the ground. And a bit of a stick looks like a rabbit hole down here. So it's like this black polythene that's been buried over top. Someone's buried plastic gears ago, maybe. And then there's uh, this tree growing on top of it. We've got maho growing in here, which is great for starting fire if you need a bit of wood. And the forest floor's got this stuff, which you can actually buy these as a plant. That, I don't know what that is, if someone can tell me. I don't think it's native, that's for sure. Got these really nice uh, pungas growing in here. One of the troubles with this place is chickens, and that's my fault. I have free-range chickens, and as you can see, all the little plants that were starting to get away on the forest floor have gone. They've scratched them up. And there you can see the chickens have been scratching for grubs all around this plant here. So any of its uh, seeds that fell off never got a chance to grow. And that's why I'm going to be putting my chickens in a coop. Naturally the spores of this plant would have come off on the ground and fallen down and grown down here. And they probably have, you know, started at one time, but the chickens would have scratched all up again. So that's why I'm getting rid of the chickens. A few weeds taken hold, but there's no ferns growing down here, which there should be. You see they've really dug right down to the roots, so the chickens are going to go. Now this is a self-seeded, uh, I think it's torterer. I often get mixed up with um, the smaller plants, the matter and the torterer. So if you know better than me, I don't think it is matter. I'm pretty sure it's torterer. It's got that look about it, that feel, but a bit small. As they get um, larger, they get much sharper. Neat uh, native plant to have growing here. So you can see the rabbits have just cleaned this out. This has all been dug up by rabbits. Classic rabbit, rabbit digging there. And I had all planted in here, lots of carnukas last year. Some of them have died, like this one. It's definitely died, it's been broken. This one survived. This one survived, although it's been eaten out the top. But I put in about a dozen here, so two are left. But I can see that have loved these two here, that one and this one. However, out here in the paddock, all of these have survived and thrived actually. And I think it's because there's more moisture. Some of the tops, the tops been eaten out, that one by here. They've all been bitten by something, but every single one... Oh, this one's been chewed right down by here. Look at that. It's been seriously chewed. And they just chew them, and they don't even eat them. Look, that's been left in the ground. There's its top. It's been chewed out. You see why I like shooting them all. This one's done well. It's starting to get away. As has this one. In fact, most of these ones that I've planted up here have done well. Another one here that I've planted. So, they're away. This is a fern that I rescued on the side of the road, but it looks like it's just oh, got a couple of wee fronds there, not doing great. Although these ones here are taken, and again, here's another carnuka that I planted, and this one as well, and this one. So, not all the carnukas died, a few made it. Self seeded remu, and as you can see, there's two plants here both competing, and the bigger fella's winning, and this one's uh, not doing so well. And this one will finally probably push the other one out. There's an old stairway someone's built here. See, there's the stairs there going up, right through, up into there. It goes up right to the top. Big carnuka. Another one of my carnukas that's survived. And up here, another one that hasn't. That's died. Very dead in the ground, I think. These were actually Pungas I bought from a nursery, and they've all died too. Not enough fresh water on them. I'm standing at the top of that stairway. So it goes down to the bottom drive. All through this native bush is this old irrigation system, which is switched off, which I need to remove, because it's doing nothing other than setting sort of, not a very nice uh, visual effect. You can see a, down there there's a um, sprinkler system. But something was growing down here at one stage. Maybe it was a fernery. Maybe I could set it up again to get plants going. I don't know if I have enough water. It's a very old irrigation system. It's been here since I've been here. You can see the old sprinkler. It's broken. There's the original one. 
Whether it could be fixed up or not, I don't know. I have to talk to Murray about it. He'd know more than me. Here's the guy I bought it off. A lot of the trees near have died. Naturally, trees do die. And this, this here, well, this belongs to that, the old Skoda. When I bought this place, I inherited that as well. It was here when I first moved in 15 years ago, renting the place. And it's been here ever since. And if anybody wants it, they can come and take it. I don't need it. The only possible use I can think of for this would be to clean all the windows and put a piece of like uh, roof or something or level about this high up and use it as a glass house because it's actually quite warm in here. It's quite uh, humid because it is just a glass house. Thoughts. Although I do think rats might get into it, but that's the only possible use I can see for this old Skoda. Just been here forever. Children should be seen and not hurt. I like that. Speaking of children, having children is hereditary. If your parents didn't have any children, chances are you won't have any either. Yeah, let me know what you reckon about that, guys. Make it into a glass house. Anyway, got a bit of flax growing down here as well. I just looked up here above where the engine was and the scoter and I see this chain around the tree with a hook on it here and I realised they probably were going to use that to either lower another engine into here or take this one out. I don't know why it's got all this wire around it or what that is exactly. Well that must be something else. I'm not sure what the story is. But, uh, there's the old engine still in there. There's not exactly flash. A little look. The native bush behind my, my house. There's more of it over there too. There's a big rimu growing over there. Uh, it really has deteriorated a lot because of pests. And my chickens have they've stuffed up a lot of the floor. So that's why I'm going to get rid of those. But potentially it could be really nice in here. And I think you'd need to run some sort of irrigation system if you wanted to plant ferns in here again. Potentially it could be really beautiful and bring back the birds. Uh, it just needs a bit of clean up a bit of tender love and care so hopefully uh, I attract more people to help me with it because this place needs so much work and the first thing my first priority is giving the house uh, so I can live back inside it again because right now I'm not getting a kitchen that's up and running a bedroom I can sleep in and rooms that are tidy yeah that's the idea I can just see down here look that there it's all over the place. Again, you guys at Hunt will know what animal that's off. That's rabbit hair. So there's been rabbits actually mating or fighting and scratching around right in here. So we need to shoot more rabbits. Rabbits are pests. They destroy native plants. The chickens need to go in a coop or in my pot and in my belly. So we can get this back to what nature would have it be. It's a beautiful bit of bush. It's a nice room. We're just poking up through there. And you can see that. It's brown leaves mixed with the green ones. And some of these kanukas are really old, beautiful big trees. I'd like to have it with lots and lots of native birds in here and sort of spread out and plant more. One thing at a time. There's so many hours a day and only so much money you've got to spend on stuff and resources. So it's really, it's got to be done. But you can just clearly see the rabbits have been digging the crap out of everything. Look at this here, it's all just rabbits. They're digging up a root system, you know, of this plant. So it's not good. It's got to change. We need to kill the bastards. I have an idea of this. This tea. Yeah. Seal. Alright. Seal it all off. Seals it all off. I didn't see you actually cut that out, bro. No, I'll have to show you that. Mm. It's a trick in itself. I reckon. Special weatherboard screws for this. Right. Glued and screwed, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Fill in the heads, obviously. Yep. The idea is it stops the rain from.
coming through. Yeah, a bit of work involved there, bud. Yeah, there is. Yep. Yeah. yeah. How do you actually cut these By hand. Really a lot of work. Well, uh, I've been wondering how the hell did you do that? Because you've got that template all. Well, it's not a template. I didn't, you didn't, I didn't see you make a template, but you got that cut out like you had a perfect template. Yep. How'd so, you do it? Compass. Right. But the procedure is first to get it parallel to the finished surface. So what happens is it sticks a bit proud. Yep. As you can see. So it's like about three, four, 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 five mils. So what I do is I make sure that off my facing that this is a consistent width all the way up so that it's going to finish in the right sort of relationship with the facing and an old wall like this are a little bit bent sometimes so yeah you got to allow a little bit it doesn't always get perfect but this is the theory so i've got that exactly to the outside measurement is 41 millimeters from here to this outside edge right now what i want to do is i want to have it about sort of five mils back so it means 41 minus 5 is 36. I'm going to set this to 36 mils. Right. This is 36 mils. Exactly. I have to do this in, it's kind of interesting. You move around the other side and I'll swap sides with you. Yeah. You might want to see this on the back side as well. But I can't just copy this like this. It yeah. doesn't work. So with this, all I'm going to get is this shape here. I'm going to get this down to here. Right. That's what I'll do first. So then what I do... I have to keep it level the whole time. Yeah, right. That's all right. I'm only trying to get this this mating shape here. Okay. I've never seen a compass shoes like that, bro. That's great. Shit. I'm getting the exact contour. Yeah. Gee, I can think of some jobs on my house, but I could. I could That's do exactly this. right. Yeah. I should probably show you the joggle stick. The joggle stuff. Yeah, that's another white man's magic. Whoop. Okay, so that's giving me this line. Right, now what I need to do is I need to have the intersection point because this is going to move straight in. Right. So I need to have this point here. Right. That's what I need to have. Well, I'm going to do that cut. That's yes, yeah. right, yeah. And the irony is that I'm marking this with a square because this is going to move in square, but this cut is not square. There's an intersection point between this and that. That point there is all I'm getting from this. I'm just getting this one point where this corner is. This corner right here. Right. That's all I want here. And that one there, I can redraw him because I must be a bit. So through this process, you've got to really check all your stuff. So I've tacked it in with a couple of small nails, as you can see. These ones here yep. that you haven't completed, you yep. just square them off, are you? Yeah. Okay. I'll square them off at this point.
reason I do two little cuts there is I'm leaving a little bit of a corner because the weatherboard's not exactly sharp. Yep. So I'm leaving a wee corner of the arras in there. So that's why I do two oh, cuts. Oh, yep. And then I just drag it backwards against the blade. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, carry on, bud. Looks like uh, the rod. There's a whole lot of wedges made for later, you know. You could use them for lots of things. You could move the planet with wedges. If I put enough of these in together and tap it with a hammer big enough, we could knock the earth off its axis. And you'd be worried about COVID. These are more dangerous than COVID. It could be called bullshit, couldn't it? Could be called a tall story. Tall story. Yeah, yeah. Rotary hay. Ross is there. Give the dog some treats. Hello Ross, good to see you mate. Subscriber. Pretty rare that they uh, can go on without being tweaked. But as you can see, yeah, mate. we're pretty much in the ballpark there aren't oh, we? Oh no, she's good bud. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's straight off the saw. It yeah. must be a good day for me today. That's the second one off the saw. Usually I've got to do a little bit of pencil marking, but... No, she looks pretty good, bud. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Well done. That's how it's done. Well done, bud. It's all about the marking. It's yep. all about taking your time, making sure you get the marking right. You get yep. the marking right, it can't be wrong. Yana's just putting some wild mint in these cups that he's just picked. And he's also got a couple of carbon calories leaves that he's taken from our tree. He's going to put one in, uh, two in each cup. Hey, son? Go stuff it right down here. It's a really good tea. And, uh, and you hold your finger on that whiteboard, boiling hot water in. <laughs> yeah, it'll break down. This is one of my favourite teas. This. It's got a lot of good stuff in. So what we're going to do is we're just going to leave that with a lid on top of it, just to sit for about five minutes. While that's brewing, make a coffee for Ross.
forces the sweetness coffee up a little bit. Grab your tea, son. Yeah, well, you got me here. That's for you, bud. It's uh, your coffee. Sorry, tide's a bit low. It's all right. Yeah. To uh, Tanner Creek, where the road goes three ways over at Greenwood. We broke down at Tanner Creek on the way down. That's a lovely place, isn't that, Tanner Creek? What do you like about V8s compared to other cars, Ab? I guess it's the burble and the talk. There's a slow down burble, a reassuring thumping while you're driving along. It's going into tunnels. Yeah, that's right. And it, sort of, it, off. it sits on the 1500 revs when I'm doing 104. Right, eh? So if I go to Christchurch, it's a tank to get there and back, you know, like both yeah. ways is a tank of fuel. That's not bad. That's not bad at all, eh? That's, I go on cruise control. You know, and I'm not trying to break records, but I go on cruise control up hills as well, and I go around corners often the same speed that I go in a straight line. I don't feel that I need to slow down for corners. Yep. Most of them are good enough. My car can handle it. Not You've always had V8s since I've known you, eh? You've been a V8 yeah. man. I'm the same. If I, if I could put a V8 in that Land Cruiser over there, I'd be laughing. That'd be a good idea. Oh, yeah, wouldn't it be? <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Where'd you get it from, Ross? I've had it for years. I've got a shed of four bucks for it. cast iron. Where the rest of them? <laughs> That's, uh, yeah, where the rest of them? <laughs> Look at you, mate. <laughs> you hungry woman. Hey, but that'd be uh, quite handy to have in the house truck if you clean it up, mate. It's extra, it's plain. What's this here, mate? It's off the barbecue. Off the barbecue. Because it's a nice flat plate and they all runs off. Yeah, you do, do a steak or two on that, mate. Yeah, that's now we'll take it out of the cooker. Oh, my old barbecue. It's from my firewood right. shed. Bloody good. If you break my cup, you're in deep shit. You know that, don't you, mate? This cup's stable as you like. Oh, you're pretty confident. I am. Still in a weird squat here. Oh, there was a bit of pain there. I looked. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay, ready? Personal spot. Oh, yeah. Pull one of those off in my lifetime. Holy shit, and, and bounce at the cup at the same time. I'm impressed, mate. Oh, well done. Give her a hand, ladies and gentlemen. I would have had your tea in it as well. <laughs> yes. If that had spilled on your head, mate, that would have been critical. Back yourself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Bloody hell. Yep. See so a bit of oil in there. Looks like it's plenty around the edge all around. Needs to be hot, mate. Be careful. It'll be bloody hot. No, I wouldn't touch it with your hands, mate. Yeah. And then once it's, uh, you're, you okay? It's going to rip my jersey off and light you to that. But yeah, no, mate. I should probably get something else. Yeah, Whoa. Oh. Oh. You don't want you on the fire. <laughs> a long pour. It's cast iron, mate. The pot's looking a lot better than it was, eh? Mm. Season good. Down low, mate. Oh, yeah. Whee! That's cool. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. And then you cool. reckon a bit lower? Or? Still burning in still the pot. Still burning in the pot, yeah. Start going. Uh, One more? Still you can put a bit more yeah, in there, mate, if you want to. Just a wee drop, but it in the pot, yeah. not the fire. Here goes. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> That's wicked fun. I think we need to do that again, don't we? Was, it's good fun, mate. <laughs> Can you fire witch? Let's go. <laughs> That's wicked. That looks amazing. Yeah. That's probably the most fun we've had around the fire so far. <laughs> I'd say so. Are you having fun, son? Yep. <laughs> Come on, fire watch, do it again. Put that on there. On here. Same thing, yeah. Right. Oh, you want to put it across there? Yeah, we'll get that. Yeah, we're off too, yeah. I'll heat that up in just a sec. <laughs> <laughs> This is the way now. Just as well we're not cooking some chips, eh? Yeah, uh, we're uh, seasoning a pot. Actually, what we're doing is just we're having water. Oh, water. Yeah, 
All Just right. give it a I clean. Got one more in it for Ab. Yeah, one more for Ab. Reminds me of that David Bowie song, you know, putting out the fire with Vaseline. Yeah, right. That one's done, eh? Yep, that one's seasoned. Jeez, it's not a red pot anymore, it's the black pot. Oh, I think it is clean There's a bloody witch's cauldron there. Don't burn your fingers, mate, that metal transfers. So we're going to season this one, then we're going to cook some fish on it. Ross has given us this plate here, and it's a grubby old one, and Jonas just put some oil on it. Oopsie, fuck me dead. Sorry about that. <laughs> it's alright. So we're heating up the oil and when we put water on we're going to have a a wee explosion, aren't we son? Yeah. Which will clean all the shit off it. Yeah. We're all standing back. Stand back. Maybe this yeah, get back. Is it hot enough? Yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, real redneck fun that in it, eh? <laughs> All right, mate. This is hotter than ever. This is going to be. Don't put too much on, just a wee drip, yeah. Okay. Okay. That is so satisfying. I don't know why, but it's satisfying. <laughs> oh, no. You're putting on the fire. Oh, just like... no, no. There you go. You put it out that time, mate. <laughs> right, back home. As you can see, I attacked myself with the uh, shaver on the boat, tidied things up a bit. Are you home, sweet Eleanor? Yes, you are. Oh, we've well, got haircuts. Yeah, I had a haircut <laughs> too. I thought I'd cut you. Let's look at yours, mate. Here we go. Hey, that's wicked. Do you like it? Oh, you're a Viking. Yeah, into it. She's got the Viking thing going on, yeah. <laughs> Next thing is the tattoo. That was awesome. No, no, I drove around for the tattoo artist today, but I couldn't find him. Oh, you, so you are getting a tattoo there, are you? I want to. Sweet. I got his business card, but... <laughs> What's his name? I don't know. Um, I met him at work. He just came in and gave me his business card. Oh, Simon's here. <laughs> yeah! Bro! Simon! There you go, man. <laughs> All the celebrities are here. Yeah, Simon's just arrived, yeah, just in time for a cup of tea. Oh, thank God. Yeah. Do you want a brew, mate? I just got a tea bag. You got a tea bag going? Steaming as we speak. Steaming, okay. Do you want a cup of tea, bro? Possibly. Possibly. Uh, he's not a real big cup of tea man, Simon. Oh. Yeah, anyway, um, that was... beers in the fridge, or a Woodstock, actually, Simon. <laughs> it's that time. I'm not going to drink it. Yeah. What are you doing tonight, mate? Don't know. Do you want to get it for dinner? Yeah. Okay, it's a date. <laughs> I'm not taking him either. <laughs> oh. What you want to come to? Oh, three big an bath. We're like cut, like we went out for a hunt. That when I come back, he goes, "Oh, try my hot bath out," and I go, "Hell yeah!" So you I'm. You guys got in together? <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't want to hear your fantasies. Did we get in together? Did you hear that? So anyway, we're, I'm in the bath there, right? I mean, you know, uh, we couldn't both fit in together, eh? I mean, he tried. I said, "No, get out of there, man! Fuck off!" <laughs> No, oh, there is room. Oh, Jesus. Well, I know you probably had uh, the old lady in there, yeah? Am I right? No, no, no. Not at all. Bullshit. So anyway, I'm in this bath, right? But if you, that's not enough, I'm in this bath, right? And I'm there, like, just, like, you know, chilling out. And next minute, here comes this big plate, right? This big plate. Oh, you wouldn't like it. Like, three massive... Sausages. No, not sausages. <laughs> Trust you to say sausages. <laughs> sausages. No, it wasn't a sausage fest. It was chops on the plate. So he put me three massive, like, with fat as mutton chops, all the veggies, all piled. I'm sitting there, like, eating like a king. And he's like my kitchen bitch. And then oh. I was like, yeah, but fuck, mate. That is a fantasy. Fuck, his, <laughs> it was a fantasy. It was the best thing that happened to me all week. Okay, so I'm going to take you to dinner tonight. Right. Because you've been so fucking awesome all week. Yeah! Do we get a drink then? <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving, but you sold I'll buy you a beer. Yes. We'll go somewhere. We'll go out too. I think uh, Chop B's good. Okay. Yeah. And, Let's go there. Um, yeah, we're gonna do that. It's, it's, a, nice. it's, a, it's a dinner date. Right, okay. Bring this cup okay, mate. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make a cup of tea. Sorry. Right, you know, it's pretty boomy in here because uh, I haven't got the room jibbed yet. This uh, hat was made by Scott's partner Iona. I'm actually gonna take it off because it's it's pretty warm in here, being insulated. Eventually, this is gonna be my bedroom. But right now, we've got some stuff to open. And uh, we've got one, two, three, four items. This one here, this is interesting because this here, somebody stuck this in my letterbox between the hours of 6.30 last night and 6 a.m. this morning. Because it was in there when we went past this morning at 6 a.m. They've actually put in, there's no, there's no name on the back. 
sort of heavy. I'm a bit scared to open it really because it's shaped like a poo. I don't, know, don't know what it is. But um, I shouldn't be rude. Thanks for whoever stuck it in there. We'll get down to that one. We'll save that mystery one till last. Uh, there's a big box here, and this box comes from. I'll probably do the stuff on top first. This box comes from uh, Tawa Tangira from Australia. And this one here is from Anthony. Well, Craig, Anthony's one first. It's Friday. Tomorrow I'm taking four very excited boys out hunting. So the reason I'm doing this box opening is because there's boots in there, customs declaration on the outside, and um, I always like to carry spare boots in the truck for the boys. Tomorrow I've got two new fellas and a couple of uh, regulars, uh, Spencer and Cole. And there is, this is from, from Anthony. Hey, thanks Anthony, thank you. Keep up the awesome content, please pass on to Arv. Something for Arv, oh mate. Two. Awesome bloke. Awesome. That's the, the one Arv's after. That comes off. So that came from Anthony from Bay Engineers. I guess that's what it's from. Hey, thank you, mate. Arv will be very appreciative of that. It's a uh, the right size too. The five five millimeter, which is what Arv so he's listening for the half drive for the impact, the bit socket. So Hex, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you very much. I would be stoked. I'll leave it on the window sill for art. People are so cool. Really appreciate that, Anthony, again. Right, I'm moving along. This is from Ross. Ross Nolly. Oh, g'day, Ross. There you are, mate. So Ross is a very self-sufficient bloke who's just currently, when I say self-sufficient, grows his own vegetables, does his own hunting. He's um, done a few articles and different things, and Recently he's broken his ankle while out deer stalking. And Ross uh, is a guy that has spent a lot of time looking after his parents when they've been unwell. I think both parents, and I might be wrong there, but I've also been emailing Ross and yeah, good bastard. What's it here? Holy shit, mate. These are the, the knives that Arb uses. Mate, how many of these? One, two, three, four, mate. Five, oh, you are a top shelf good bass. You know, a really handy knife to have, fishing, hunting, and you know, a lot of the young guys that come out just don't have knives. And one of these can go on the belt, it's got a good grip, and you can certainly blood that on a pig. Tight grip, not, not the biggest one. Razor sharp, very handy mate, very handy. Barco made in Sweden. Good Swedish steel. I'm pretty sure this is what Arb uses, and he says it gets about three years out of one. He uses it like for a chisel and for doing everything. These mad purple glasses, I've got to apologize to the person who I stole them off, they don't belong to me. I don't know how I acquired them, but I've got a terrible habit of picking up other people's glasses and now I'm using them. I do apologize for that. And if they are your glasses, let me know and I'll send them back to you. It'll be somewhere local. It's probably in a... I've got a funny feeling I might have stolen them from the, uh, the chemist in either Motawaka or from CRT in Richmond. One or two, because I got home and had my top pocket and I just don't remember. It's a real terrible thing I do and um, it's not the first time it's happened, so I do apologize. And I'm still using it. And my glasses will be with you guys because I would have taken mine out and picked up the wrong ones. Right, um, thank you, Ross. Awesome. I'm going to have to give one to Art. Alrighty. Well, let's do the big box and save the mystery one for last because uh, it's a bit of weight in that. I would like to say a special thank you to, I hope I'm saying your name right, bro, T A U. Tower Tangira because this has been sent from Australia. Uh, it says what's inside, it says boots and stuff like laces and stuff. And you know, just to send this alone, the weight of that to send that from Aussie. Well, there's the price on it there 55, 55 Australian dollars and 70 cents. That's like 80 New Zealand dollars, mate. I've got to say, thank you very, very much. Um, 
it will make a difference to some young fellas. We actually do have enough boots right now because I've got another couple of boxes people sent, but they, they do go. Um, so don't see there's any more boots for now. Uh, I've got two young fellas that are going to need boots that I know of, and there's always new guys coming up. This year we've had quite a lot of uh, new guys on our, our hunts and our boot camps. I'll try to get that as much as I can. Last weekend we took young Spencer fishing to Durbel Island, and I'll be doing a few more of those Durbel trips for young fellas. It's all paid for by Patreon money, that pays for fuel, and Patreon Dan is the uh, guy that provides the boat, and Patreon pay for fuel, so it's a it's a uh, boys fishing trip, we'll be doing more of those. So if you're local, and you don't have a dad to take you fishing, uh, let us know, and yeah, we'll see if we can fit you in. So there's a, a letter in here, which I'm going to read first, and um, I uh, never, never fails to, to really sort of, I get blown away, I, I always think, man, people that take the time just to package something up, out of their day, because they've got their own lives, their own challenges, so much going on, and then they do something like this, you know, which just like is, um, right, I'll try and read this without stuffing up, because I'm a shit reader. Morning Clay, here's those boots I said I was going to send a couple of weeks back, right now I remember who it was. All size 10, excellent. I know exactly uh, who these are going to fit. I've had them a few years now, but have barely worn them, so figured you can put them to good use if you have some young blokes who don't have good shoes and boots to get out there in the bush. They are not waterproof, as you would see how a little bit of water never hurt anybody except the candy van. <laughs> I've actually got some waterproofing stuff there, so we'll give them a shot with that, which... Uh, was given to me and I opened that a while ago. I have put a new set of inner soles and some laces. Jeez. These are a good lick, man. Holy shit. Now, high tech aren't a bad boot. I've used high tech myself. I would say they're middle range um, as far as price goes, but you get a really good dry boot. And um, I actually wear them myself. These are a good pair of boots. They look virtually brand new. Hardly worn at all. And inside, it's got the laces. Brilliant. More than one pair of boots in here. Look at these. These are very similar to the ones I gave Mikhail. Very similar. Got the zip on the side, and also the the, the, the lace up job. Plenty of tread on those. Good as new. Definitely will uh, be good for some young fella. Mate, that's too much. All size 10. Wow. Really, really, really appreciative. Thank you. The mystery one. I'll come up close to this because I don't think it's very big. It's always a little bit uh, funny opening something that hasn't come through the post. Using Ross's uh, knife. Gee, these are sharp. Someone's gone to a lot of trouble to wrap this. It feels like it's got layers in it. It must be something that can't get wet because it's all got plastic around it. See that? That's got plastic in there. Well, it's not a poo. It smells like... Tape, glue, or something. Shit! I think I think that's actually a, a Garmin bloody. There's no writing in there. That's nothing. That I'm not 100% sure. That might be a stem, but that looks like a, an alpha. If that's an alpha, that's like a thousand bucks. How it's beating fast. It's a fucking alpha, man. Look at that. I've just bought a new one because the other one got flogged. Who sent this? It's not new, it's second hand. Who sent this? 
shit on. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. This is mine. This belongs to me. There's my phone number on the inside. I won't show that, but there's, there's Clay Tall Stories there because I write it in all, all mine. I looked at it and I just sort of thought, I recognise something about this. This is mine. This is the unit that got, this is the unit that got stolen out of my truck and someone, there's no writing anywhere, has put it back in my letterbox. <laughs> and it's still got the still got the card in it too, I think. They haven't taken that out. Holy shit, no, the card's not on there. That's okay. Well <laughs> I only just spent the money and bought a brand new one, dude, so it would be nice if you returned it a bit sooner. But on the other hand, we've now got two units for the boys. So they have to share it, which is really cool, because I just spent the bloody $1,400 buying another one and the collar. So these are 1000 bucks or 900 bucks each. So what's happened is, um, I'm guessing, because there's no note here, there's nothing, but I'm only guessing, nothing fell out. No, you guys would have seen something fell out, there's nothing in there at all. It hasn't even got, see, it's got nothing on it anywhere. So what's happened is, the person that's taken this, I, I don't have any idea. It either got, ta it either got taken when I was parked up uh, in town, um, outside the mega store, or no leamings, or it got taken when I was in the forestry that same weekend, and I was up Long Gully, and I left the truck for quite a while, um, and forgot to lock it. So, um, this is mine. This belongs to us. I bought this for the boys originally, so they could track the dogs, and now... I'm going to turn it on just see if it's because maybe he's used it. He's got his dogs in there or something. Maybe there's a clue, you know. Um, if he's used it, it'll have, it'll have might have his tracking or his stuff on it. Um, shit, it's I'm a bit shaky. It's a bit like okay, didn't expect that. Let's see if uh, just going to turn it on and see what what's uh, what's on it still. And. Um, how about that, eh? How about that? I never ever thought it would come back to us. I wonder what happened there. I wonder whether someone's conscience, you know, um, got the better of them because I, I talked about it quite a bit on the channel or I wonder if it was a mistake. Um, one of the young fellas took it by mistake and didn't want to say something and poked it back in there. Could have been that. The main thing is we actually have it back. Let's see what the situation is with the uh, with the dogs here. Um, right, no dogs in there. It's completely everything's completely empty. Zip. Go to dog list. Dog list. Empty. Nothing. So he's deleted all my dogs off it. Someone knew what knew what they were doing. The track record. Go okay, the track record. Let's see what that's got on it. Nothing. Yeah, not no signal anywhere, nothing at all. It's just 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 maps. There's no lines or anything. And go back to old tracks. And um, what about points? Nah, nah. It's been completely um, restarted. Well, that's great. That's cool. That's actually really cool. So to the person that did uh, hand this in, first of all, I want to say thank you for returning it. Uh, secondly, I want to say don't take other people's stuff that's not yours. Um, the fact that you've given it back, it doesn't make the fact you stole it right, but I really do appreciate it's back because, you know, basically uh, this whole thing I do with taking young guys out is funded by a handful of good bastards. You know, I've got 50,000 subscribers, but I've only got 800 patrons. And, you know, that's a very tiny percentage of the people that watch me that actually support what I'm doing. So. You know, those guys, a lot of them can't afford it either, and they put their hand in their pocket so we can run gear like this for the boys so they're safe, so the dogs are safe, so they know where they are, so we're separated, we can communicate. And to have this taken out of the truck, which it was, uh, partly my fault for leaving the truck unlocked, being silly. Um, 
but still, when you took it, we, we were out it for quite a while and I had to then buy a new one, which I really could not afford to take out of the, the funds, but I wanted to keep the boys, you know, in contact with dogs and me, so we're all safe, so I went and bought another one. Now we've got an extra one, it's actually quite a good thing because tomorrow I'm taking four boys out and there's only one spare one to go, so that means that two boys can share one each. Okay, well that's my uh, my box opening, bit of a bit of a turn around there. Thank you guys for sending me stuff, and I'm just going to end up by saying, please do not send me stuff if um, you're a young family and you know you've got kids. Your kids need it more than me. Please do not send me stuff if you're having any sort of financial problems at all yourself. Uh, only if you're in a position where you can give a little bit, it's it's really appreciated. But do not send me stuff if you you know you've got your own um, things to deal with. And I appreciate the gift. I'm not throwing it back in anybody's face, but just want to put that out there because I, I do um, have my needs met mostly by my patrons as far as what we do here. That was uh, pretty... I'm buzzing a bit now. I'm buzzing a bit to get that back, and I'm also buzzing for all the stuff we've got here. And these knives, I'm going to take actually one of these or two of these out tomorrow just to spare knives the boys because you definitely can kill a pig with one of these and all the rest of the cuts. They're a great little, great Swedish knife and well-priced to buy. Handy. It can clip on your belt. Be good, you can't be good, be careful. See you soon. Since I got post spayed, she got fat. Didn't you mate? I haven't increased her food, but she's put on the weight. Anyway, we're going pig hunting today. I couldn't get the usual posse yum from the uh, supermarket. They're out of it, so I got chunky and steep. And that's what I'm feeding them. But Poe, you're only getting a tiny little bit, mate, because look at you. You're fat. You're fat ass. Isn't she, guys? That's right, your mum's fat. Yeah, she is. You get a fat mum. Your girlfriend's fat. You're not fat. No, you could never be fat. You're just big. And you, well, yeah, I'll give you a little bit of chunky. Sorry, no posse on today. B could never be fat, could you be, eh? Well, let's see if we can do this with the uh, finger staying intact. It's all in the mud now. You can hear a dog's tail wagging. There you go, mate. Eat up. Where you go. You're a good girl, eh? Eat up. Where you go. That's all you're getting. Bring us into his too. Feeding your dogs, Clay, before you're hunting them? Damn right I am. They won't actually be in the hunt zone for probably another two and a half hours, and by then that will be well broken down. And no, you're not getting any more poke. Your pace, in your box pace, in your box. Eat up, Bixie. He's just a real delicate eater. And yours is gone, Ducky, hey? Eh? Here we go, mate. You get spoiled, hey? Very spoiled. Better pick up our posse um, rubbish. So today I'm taking away four young fellas hunting. We've got Spencer and Cole, who are regulars with us. And then we're also picking up a couple of new young guys, which I'll introduce to you once we get in the hunt zone. Right now it's just getting everything in the truck. Stuff like first aid for the boys. My rifle, actually it's not a rifle, it's a gun, it's 14. And these things here, so I've got communication with the fellas all the time, talking to them. I need to get some new ones. And also GPS gear for the dogs and the boys. There's a couple of jackets I use. I've always been a game gear sort of fan, because they, they build stuff for pig hunters, but as you can see, Stuff does get uh, ripped, and these are more of a raincoat than, well, uh, not really a raincoat, but they are more waterproof than anything else that I've hunted with. you got to go to really to oil skin if you want to get more waterproof than that. But this here is uh, the Hunter's Element one, which I recently uh, was given when I was at the hunting and fishing shop by the rep. And not being a Hunter's Element uh, fan in the past, so I was a wee bit sort of not sure about it. It's taken me a while to get this thing going, but this is actually really, really a good wee system which your GPS goes in there, and it took me a while to set it up right, because you've got these uh, these strings in here which just pulls down and you set them right, I didn't have it quite set up right, but now it's set up, it's actually actually quite good, uh, I like it, to be honest, it's uh, quiet in the bush because it's soft, you haven't got that sort of, uh, these these are pretty good too, the, the Game Gear ones, but this one's exceptionally quiet, uh, and it's got the pads around here, which I'm a great fan of, because the Game Gear ones, they're all right, but these are a lot more padded. So if you're a skinny bastard like me and you're carrying a pig out, not that I do much carrying these days, but it's um, good on the shoulders. I've carried a few out with this and it's comfortable, so I kind of like it. But it does overheat because it's quite thick. 
but for cold winter hunting, excellent. And again, chaps, and these are Game Gear chaps, and I like those, they're good. There's nothing wrong with them, I've had them for a while, they're made here in New Zealand, they've lasted two seasons now, well, this is the third season, so they're good value. And because I'm in the forestry with the boys, uh, I'm going to be wearing this, just so I show up, so they know where I am, just for safety purposes. It's a good idea too, if you're hunting, to have something bright, so you don't get shot. We're running the standard sort of uh, TT5s and TT15s, these are all TT, well, that's a TT15, they're fives. Uh, this is a new TT15, and we've got three of these Alpha 100s, one for me and two for the boys to spread out. Stick knives, we've got a standard, it's an old sword, it's been around forever, it's had a chew on the end of my dog, and the lanyard's come off, hasn't it? Uh, my one is made by Simon Walker, beautiful knife, and it's a, it's a sort of a mixture between a stick knife and a field dressing knife, and it needs a clean from the last pig that was stuck in it, okay? And that last pig was actually stuck by young Spencer. Hey Po, she's getting in the act, she knows what's going on, she knows the gear. I want to show you the head torch, we'll get that in later. This is a Nex torch, and there's the, the brand there. These are good, these are really good. And they've got a system on it that tells you how far down your, your uh, sort of battery's running. And you see, I can see now that it's only got two left, so it's getting a bit low, so I need to go on the charger. I'll charge it shortly. Good torches. So the old Clay Tool Stories channel started off as a hunting channel an outdoor cooking channel and doing stuff with young fellas we always have done we made that into sort of our our thing but you know as youtube kept on changing their community guidelines making it harder and harder to show you guys and bring to you guys the reality of going out harvesting free range meat while at the same time controlling the biodiversity of all the introduced animals here in new zealand because there's nothing that naturally predates on them it made it very very hard for us guys particularly in new zealand to to give you a real honest picture of what hunting's about. That'll do, Pace. Stop your grizzly. He's in the back here right here. That's my dog, Pace. He uh, somehow managed to worm his way into the front cab with me about a year ago, and I've been having him in the front ever since. Oh, Mark. Anyway, what I was going to say to you was that uh, these days, a lot of my uh, YouTubers not hunting anymore. It's, um, well, I don't hunt all the time anyway. You know, once or twice a week's enough. Keep the freezer full of meat and meet from my friends and family. So I, I've sort of like just gone on the channel now, changed it to just basically filming what's going on at home. And the funny, weird thing about all that is, if I post up a hunting video, it goes below average. And if I post up a video of just like life on the farm and day-to-day -day stuff, it goes really well. So work that one out, bug it a hind, hey? It's, it's bizarre, isn't it? It's almost like it's been controlled. Nah, that's, that's just some silly conspiracy theory that maybe we're controlled by what you watch. They never do that to us. <laughs> they actually do. It's based on what you click on, what you enjoy, that's what comes up in your feed all the time. And then they pour the same ads into you like that. So anyway, yeah, I'll just uh, tell you a little bit more about myself. I, um, the last the last couple of years, those that follow the channel know I had a bit of a battle with the old Big C and uh, currently winning it. And part of winning it was changing my diet drastically not only just going to keto but also going to one meal a day well recently I've changed that to two meals a day and you'll be asking well why one meal a day well the reason is simple when you eat just every 24 hours and you're fasting in between that creates a state of autophagy and that's when your body chews up all the bad cells the cancerous cells and the proof's in the pudding Many people I know around me that had the same cancer or similar cancer that I met at the same time when I got it uh, are either dead now or very sick and there's only two that I know that are still doing okay and both of those two are on particularly uh, strict diets. However, I got a really crook guts about two months ago. I ate some berries that stripped the lining out of my stomach and it's taken a long time to come right and constantly I'm drinking this stuff, Kefir, which is bloody good. Yum. I drink a couple of bottles a day, and that's definitely not uh, keeping me in a faster state. But I've got to get my stomach right because without your guts working right, nothing works right. And on that note, I'm going to tear into this bit of turkey because I'm uh, eating twice a day now. This is my first um, breaking my fast. Well, not quite because the kefir is a food in itself. The turkey is good chomping and chewing. I've cooked it some drumsticks and some chicken wings for the boys today. Anyway, I'll stop yakking and we'll see you down the road. I'm going to eat this. Mmm, good. 
chomping and chewing, hell yeah. So we've got a uh, new fellow Jake in the back, his dad Jamie's just dropped him off, we're at Three Brothers Corner, we've also got in the truck in the front here we've got Spencer who's loading the units and we've also got Cole hiding in the other corner somewhere and we're going to pick up now Toby I think is his name, we've got that right, hopefully, pretty sure it is, uh, in Wakefield and then we're going to go and do some hunting and to be honest I'm quite excited because it's been raining the last three days and pigs like to move around. Having said that, it's the afternoon and yeah, we'll see how we go. You'd be Manny's dog would have been there. Each hunt we're doing, I'm getting the boys to go through a little introduction of themselves. Uh, mainly so they get practice that when they go into the real world and they've got to do, say, an interview for a job or something. Because life's like that, you've got to actually put your, your best foot forward and first impressions really count when you meet someone. I was really impressed today actually meeting uh, Jake because he gave me a good firm handshake, looked me in the eye and... You can you, you read a lot from a person's uh, face. We do actually look at faces when we're talking. If I'm busy talking and I've got the uh, camera like poked at the roof like that, you guys will get very bored and you can't really tell what I'm really meaning by my expressions. Because you look at the face and it's it's part of it. So this is what I'm trying to teach you boys. We'll start off with the old school guys that have done it before. Oh. In introduction, age, and your interest. There's three things. That's too hard to remember, okay? Yeah. Crank it up. My name's Spencer. I like pig hunting. Oh yeah. I'm see, see my fingers poking up? See yeah. there, you're looking yeah. there. Because yeah. if you look at yourself, yeah. it looks like you're looking at yeah. the corner of the screen, okay? Yeah. So look at that corner there, okay? Yeah. My name's Spencer, I'm 13. Like pig hunting, dirt biking. Yeah. G'day, I'm Cole, I'm 14, and I like pig hunting and just anything hunting really. Awesome, okay. Oh, yeah. That wasn't too hard. So the, the thing is, and you guys at home, if you're ever talking to a camera, make sure you look at the actual camera bit. That's where my finger is, where I'm putting my finger over there. Don't don't look at yourself, otherwise it looks like you're looking at the corner of the screen all the time. It's <laughs> mad. You see guys vlogging sometimes to do that. Yeah. Okay. We'll try. Uh, Toby. Hi, I'm Toby. I'm 12, and I like pig hunting, dirt biking, outdoors. Cool, mate. And uh, last of all, Jake. Yeah, I'm Jake. I'm 15, and I like uh, hunting in general. And yeah, do quite a bit of possum trapping and motor biking as well. Sweet. As our interviews out of the way, we'll get on the road and uh, go do some pig hunting now. Currently we're in the uh, forestry, Oliver's Road, pretty popular place for pig hunters who like to catch sows and suckers like me. And uh, boys have got the dogs all collared up, good to go. Another dog marks, is it? Yeah, there's been other dogs around, she's peeing on everything. It's thick enough to hold a pig down there, for sure. There's a really nice breeze coming up this gully, so it's good to just let these dogs have a bit of a sniff around. Nice one. Highly unlikely something down there, but just uh, we check before we go any further. So while we're making our way to the actual hunt zone where we're going to be peeling off and going for a wee walk in the scrub, we've got Poe on the front of the bonnet just in case she picks up scent of a pig that's either crossed the road or someone else has lifted. Highly unlikely it's time now is uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon or 2.08, but you just never know. So um, she's there. We don't we don't hunt bonneting really, but uh, the fact that she can catch a pig off the bonnet, why not stick her there? Just cruise to the hunt zone. She will jump off if she smells something, that's for sure. She's getting a little bit of scent there, just going, oh, I'm just thinking. Man, there's been a lot of dogs and trucks up here today. You can see the marks. Cole and Jake have taken the dogs down to the gully and the wind is coming straight up towards us here which is just perfect so they're walking them down it's a good place to uh, get onto something hopefully they're going to go around this bit of cut over here you can see in the distance there's a bit of uh, native let's look at this native just in this piece here and then it's got pine all around it and these are the places where pigs often like to be cover a lot of area just need one dog to to pick up scent. So we just heard a squeal and Bixie's come up treed. Keen as. Bixie's still showing up treed. They're trying to work out the fastest path down there. Well, there goes Cole now running across that face. Not easy going over that stuff. Real strange situation. Boys down the gully. Three of us heard the squeal in the bark. 
and they got down there's no pig just the dog in the creek so my theory is that it was a small one it killed it it's then had a drink washed all the blood off its mouth because it's in the creek come off it and the boys can't find it that's the only thing i can think of but we're not really 100 percent sure because it was treated for about 12 minutes it's another pig for Bigsy, but we just don't know how big it is and where it is. They may find it, but I doubt it. It didn't take too long for them to kill it. Well, this young fella's done quite a bit of walking with me, and I just want to pan around here and show you guys the gully. At least the valley on the other side here. It's just beautiful. The sun's just about ready to go down. Get him, Bigsy. Get him, mate. Good boy. And uh, look down there. Beautiful green grass. Nice home. And uh, you'll see the forest on the other side here. So can all three boys hear my radio okay right now? Yeah, okay, well, uh, it's a race. We're only like um, a couple hundred metres from you. First, the first boy to get to me uh, wins, uh, what is it going to be? Well, let's make it, um, hmm... Ah, uh, that brand new Barco knife that's sitting in the truck with the orange, yeah, the orange um, scarab uh, sheath. Yeah, that brand new, that brand new Barco knife, the Swedish steel, razor sharp. First guy to the top gets it to take home tonight. Fair enough. Well, you better catch up with him, mate. You better catch up with him. You, you can easy win this. You just got to start running. You've got the radio. You heard it first, so you should be the first one to go. Did the boy shoot off or the dog shoot off? Well, you've got the radio. You should have been the first one to go. You heard the message first. Her dogs have seen them. <laughs> Big C and B just saw our dogs and saw Pace and the other fellas coming up. Who's going to win the Barco knife tonight? Oh, I think we've got a winner. I think it's going to be Jake. I oh, know Cole's putting in an effort in now, he's starting to run again. Cole, good walk out bud. Yeah. Good try mate, you went through a lot of scrub down there. We done a big wide circle around you and above you, and uh, you guys were uh, obviously going through some quite thick stuff, eh? Yeah. Yep. Oh, Spencer's just about running on empty I'd say. Can't say you got to dig in mate, we're not home yet by a country mile. Still got to get back to the truck yet. Okay, we uh, we got a wee prize. <laughs> we're, we're back in Wakefield. We just dropped off uh, young Toby. He went well today. So we're going to give this uh, knife. This has come from Ross Nolly, so thanks, Ross. We're going to uh, give this to Jake. There you go, mate. They're a handy knife. Thank you. Swedish steel. And good for fishing. Good for everything, actually. You could probably um, do a lot worse as far as buying a, a knife that's got good steel and sharp because it's bloody sharp. Real sharp. So don't cut yourself on it. It is sharp. You'd uh, stick a pig with that and you'd bone one out and you'd skin it piece of piss. Yeah, hey, we're going to carry on, guys. Uh, thanks for watching our video. Good luck with your own hunting. You can't do any worse than us. We're only just uh, having fun out there on the hill. Thanks for watching, team, and good luck with your own hunting. And we'll see you in the next one. Be good, can't be good then. Be careful. Can't be good then. Be careful, yeah. Actually, speaking of being careful, do you think you were careful today? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, you were. You were extra day. You were good. We didn't have any stuff up all day. You were good. You were pretty much, yeah. Didn't lose anything. Didn't hurt. The only thing that was you got, you got a bit tired. But other than that, you were bloody good. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely improving. No silly stuff and, um, yeah, start to sort of mature into your hunting more. So, yeah, uh, do you want to come out again with us sometime, Jake? Yeah, I'm keen as. You're keen as, mate? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, well, it was fun, eh? But it'd be more fun if we got a pig. So, we'll uh, take Jake. I like the attitude, bud, because it's the reality of that, and uh, we've actually got an extra one of these now, so that's cool. Yep. So thanks for watching, guys, and be good. Can't be good then. Be careful. See you later.
Right, get your boys home. Yeah. 